A frequently asked question regarding all types of geosynthetics is, how long will they last? The Geosynthetics Research Institute undertook answering this question with a 12-year research project. The research results regarding this question were presented at GeoAmerica's 2016 in a keynote lecture by Dr. Robert Kerner. At the conference, Dr. Russell Jones, president of the International Geosynthetic Society, interviewed Dr. Kerner on the research and the findings. Stay tuned for that interview now. I'm Russell Jones. I'm sat here uh, with Professor Robert Kerner at the uh, Geo Americas 2016 conference in uh, Miami Beach. Bob, can I first say how much I really enjoyed your keynote lecture this morning Thank on you. Uh, lifetime predictions? It's my pleasure in presenting it. Uh, as you said, the, the question that's probably asked more often than any other question to do with geosynthetics is just how long will they last? Your research uh, on lifetime prediction of, of covered geomembranes um, took around 12 years or so to, to complete. That's quite a big commitment from, from GSI. Yes, it is. Um, that said, with extremely long research, the usual outlets of information become difficult. Take, for instance, a student working in a university to put in front of him or her 12 years of activity doing a research project is, of course, uh, just unacceptable. So for the typical university research, which of course is where I stem from, this, this was not possible. But when we broke out of university into a self-standing institute, it became possible. And so that type of, of venue fits for long-term research. And it also does another thing, Russell. It, it's non-competitive to the universities and to the consulting companies and to the research, to the testing research people. So it's something we can do. We're glad to do it. Our membership is willing to support us on a sustained basis. And so it works out swell. And in fact, we particularly target long-term research. Good. The, the, the research that you have been doing um, uses the, the half-life approach. Um, uh, do you think this is uh, applicable for all design cases for geosynthetic? It, it's applicable certainly for a starting point to get a numeric value, okay? And, and that's critical in these discussions. So it's not by our invention or our uh, discovery. It is common practice in all polymer work my older son is in the automotive business and they use it for paints and for all kind of polymeric materials. So half-life is a traditional value which has been with us for probably the 50 or 60 years of polymeric materials and we have just continued in that mode. To be sure, there are situations which will increase or decrease these values. And a prudent designer would have to look into those idiosyncrasies to see what they are. One, one obvious thing for the exposed condition is what is the orientation of the material. If it's facing the south, it'll be more aggressive than if it's facing the north. In the southern hemisphere, of course, it's opposite. So those subtleties have to be brought on top of the numbers that we presented this morning. Okay, well, let, let's look at the numbers. And for the um, for the covered geomembranes to start with, mm -hmm. uh, the numbers that you were mentioning was for a one and a half millimeter thick geomembrane uh, at 20 degrees C, uh, around 500 years. Um, that's quite an encouraging number, don't you think? Yes, and from my perspective, beginning in this area, it would be almost considered an outstanding number. Um, with time, though, I, I understand more about the chemistry of the situation, about how these degradation mechanisms have to diffuse into the material, have to first consume the antioxidant, which in this particular case was almost 200 years, and then start to work on the molecular structure. Gradually, the properties decrease. When they decrease to 50% of the original value, that's the target and we go with data uh, manipulation and extrapolation to the 20 degrees Celsius value. Sure. When, when you were looking at the, um, the exposed geosynthetics, um, 
certainly some of the, the lightweight geotextiles had very, very short half-lives. Yes. And certainly uh, experience I have in the UK of its limited UV exposure that uh, you can see a geotextile disappear in less than a year. Uh, were you surprised by, by these results or not? No, not really. Um, we were, so to speak, warned by manufacturers to keep particularly the very fine denier filament type geotextiles and they come to us as needle punch non-wovens to keep them protected in a polyethylene wrapper during storage, during shipment, and even after placement we're cautioned to cover them within somewhere around four to six weeks. And so when we come out with three to four months, that four to six weeks has resonance. That's kind of the number to get them protected. And so we, we were expecting that. If you recall though, one of the products we had was specially formulated with high antioxidants and it lasted for five years. So here you have a multiple of 20 or whatever the ratio is. And so you can do things with the formulation that give better lifetime. But the work I presented this morning on seven geotextiles and five geomembranes was basically commercially available materials which had generic specification that a designer could utilize and that a testing laboratory could come and verify if it was the right material. Sure. And the, the geomembrane um, element of that, the, again, the HDP one and a half millimeter thick, um, that the, the half-life of that was uh, between 75 and 100 years, depending on whether you're looking at the lab test results or, or whether the field, the, the field results. And, and that, that's significantly more than the geotextile. Significantly more than the geotextile, and the key there is specific surface area. The, the finer the filaments, the more porous the structure, the more the sun can get in and approach the entire circumference of these fine filament fibers. For the geomembrane, they can't do that. They only have the surface to work from. And that ratio of that number is just guessing 50,000, maybe 100,000 times difference. So just doing a ratio, you would expect that the same material in a very fine filament would have a few months of lifetime, whereas in a flat situation would give you a very long lifetime. The other point I wanted to make is with the HDP geomembrane exposed versus covered, there was a ratio of seven. And, and I think that was interesting to verify what a lot of people have been saying in a rather glib way. So now we have a number that exposed the factor of a seven will reduce your lifetime for the same material. And whether that works for all geosynthetics, I guess I'd kind of doubt it, but here is one that we have quantitative data for. Sure. Finally, do, do you think the results of the research will give increased confidence in the use of geosynthetics? Yes, I do. Um, regulators are apprehensive about allowing materials they're not familiar with, and while geosynthetics has been here as a technology, from 1977 when the first conference was in Paris. Since that time, people in the industry certainly have a lot of knowledge, a lot of data, a lot of information to present. But your typical regulator who's doing everything except geosynthetics is apprehensive. And so hopefully this will turn the corner on some of them and have them more embrace the situation. I think that holds also for private owners of facilities, landfills, of leach pads, of, of any canals, surface impoundments, the whole plethora of engineering applications in the infrastructure. I think it will give them confidence and hopefully it will, if not take away, mitigate that question so now they ask other more relevant questions of things which might affect their structures. So in a way, maybe we've shifted the discussion a little bit, and I hope that's the case with this research. Bob, thank you very much for your time. Dr. Jones, my pleasure. <laughs> to read the full 
46-page report by Dr. Kerner, download the three-volume Geo America's 2016 Proceedings, available at geoamericas2016.org. A journal paper will also be released in Geosynthetics International in the second half of 2016.